Hi guys and welcome to the final episode when it comes to the setting up your desktop and I have used XFCE4 because it seems to me like it's by far the most common used environment. And if you have followed the previous episodes like the installation and then setting up X and in that episode I just installed XFCE and um, you, it should look like something like this and it's not very attractive in any way. So I thought we fix that and make it look like something you are more used to see, especially if you have tried different distributions like Manjaro for example. And uh, once again, I can forget stuff. So if I do something wrong, I don't record it again. I just moving on and it feels more <clears throat> realistic that way. So the first thing we want to do is in the applications and the terminal. I always make sure that uh, the system is up to date. And it is. So when it comes to appearance, it's a personal preference. But either way, you need to know how to change it and some tips and tricks. So you don't need to do everything I do, but you get a hint of where to change stuff and how to fix it. So the first first thing, if you want the XFCE for goodies that and as you see it contains a lot of stuff the plugin for Thunar the media tags a lot of different utilities the screenshot stuff the whisker menu the mouse pad so just press everything because you will need all that you get some wallpapers and common stuff and then we will need the XDG user this and I will show you what that is in a little bit. Otherwise, after that, it's just a matter of this is a good time to get the good stuff like Firefox is a good thing. I prefer Genie for editing files. You can do Blender, GIMP and all you can think of. I will post some I'll paste some useful programs in the description below just to give you a good start with your desktop. But for now I'm happy with that. And just this warning stuff is I have already installed Firefox but uh, I'm just doing it again so you can see. And screen fetch, I like screen fetch. I can't remember if I installed it. Yep I have, but we do it again. Now, the XDG user deer, what was that? Well, if you go into your home, you see it's not like it's supposed to be. So, run this command. Update. Sorry. That one. Okay. And this is just because I have done this already. If you run it, it will not show this stuff. So we need to log in and log out. We do that, log out, log out, log in. Hmm, it should be there. Maybe it messed up when I we did it. Hmm. Well, moving on, we'll get back to that later. So, the panels. I don't like this at all. Again, it's a personal preference. But like this little thing, I don't like that. Gone. And I prefer to have mine at the bottom. <clears throat> and once in you are in the panel settings, 
like this desktop stuff I don't use that I never ever do that I happy with one so you go into items and the desktop switcher workspace switcher gone the clock is a good thing and if you press this plus button you get a lot of stuff you can just add to your menu uh, one popular thing seems to be this weather so we add that and here you can move now the weather is to the right I want it next to the clock on the left side so just move it up go into that and here you can change where you are and I am in this little village in Sweden okay close you see now we have a perfectly nice weather this is it seems that like it's mandatory in every single distribution and it <clears throat> Of some reason people seems to find it so so awesome but come on it's just a standard xfc 4 item and this menu is the stock one if you want you can add the also quite popular whisker menu add close move that up and then you can remove the stock one remove close and look it started to look just like the distributions isn't that amazing so in the desktop settings <clears throat> now you will see you have a bit more wallpapers but I can't say any of them is pretty nice so go into your home show your hidden folders sorry We need Firefox. And we Google some Arch Linux wallpaper. Let's see. Take something more attractive. <sighs> Feel free to do whatever you want or take whatever you want, but I go with. Uh, <laughs> that yeah I, we, we take that for now <laughs> save image I'll download stuff I don't feel like that this is just demonstration that one is kind of nice Download, download, download. 1920 by 1080. Not here. Odd again. Either way, I take that uh, in anyway. I just want to show you something. Do, 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 do. The thing is in local. I want to make a new folder. A dot makes it hidden. You don't need to make it hidden if you don't want to. And I save it over there. Let's see. I will show you now. I have a new folder dot wallpaper which makes it hidden. And there is the wallpaper desktop settings again and here you can add a new folder other go into my home select my wallpaper folder like that a bit dark perhaps but it's just for demonstration purposes so I go back again and take mm -mm -mm another wallpaper I believe it was a bit too dark mm, no we stick with that one so as you see now it's more the kind of the way you are used to see it perhaps but then the <clears throat> the terminal 
we need to make it look a little bit more attractive at least to me so we do a little bit transparency not too much maybe like that hmm. yeah kind of easy to see so I want the screen fetch to launch when I launch the terminal nano dot bash rc add the line screen fetch save and exit and now when I launch the terminal it looks like that so now we're getting somewhere here we can also see 552 packages and that includes I have open box as well and um, what can I say it's like a thousand packages less than uh, a pre-made distribution now you are getting to the whole point with doing this from scratch so the appearance isn't very attractive either as you all know but if you're new to Linux you don't know if you go into your settings and appearance you have your icons here not super nice either and by the way the xdg dir update command I did a little bit back it will give you all the folders here I already I did that and then I removed them and now when I did it again it didn't feel like uh, doing it I will look into that later but it will it will work for you either way I want some nicer icons how to do that one way is to go in like to the yard and search for icons and uh, <clears throat> but I don't um, do as you want but I, I prefer the more manual way xfce4 icons you don't have to need you don't need to write icons you just go to debian art like uh, uh, where, did, where is it box, box look or something like that hmm. themes oh it wasn't themes i was thinking about where was it it's been a while since i uh, gnome icons maybe gnome look maybe we'll do it icon themes i need to look what my icon icons was called ultimate edition dark glass let's see if we can find that ultimate edition dark come on and search all right moving on taking something else obsidian well why not it looks quite familiar doesn't it well we take that one it's always hard to find a download button on these sites files don't press the install if you are just download it and save it <laughs> save file yep yeah. I wonder where they sa saved it. And by the way, I don't think I have any packager for package manager for this. So I believe file roller is a good application. Yep. Now we can unzip, which is a kind of nice thing if you are downloading something. 
I really hate my slow internet. But the point is that when you go into this is the point. In your root directory you have user and share and if you go to i you should have icons there you have it so this is system wide icons that everyone can access and you need to dig in your root system so it, it's better to have your icons in your home folder local share create folder icons I'm not 100% remember correct, but we will find out very soon. Uh, extract here. And there we have it. We take the green one. Move it over there. And then we go into settings. Appearance. Icons. And look, there it is. So, icons you put in your home username dot local share icons is icons for your user only. So, let's apply that one. And look, we're getting somewhere now. Maybe not the sexiest icons in the world, but it's still just to give you an idea. And it's the same concept when it comes to themes and all that. So, <clears throat> in, the, in that case, it will be local share themes. And just put your themes into this folder, and it will pop up in the wrong, it will put, pop up in the appearance style. Because to be honest, well, this is kind of nice. This is probably how I would keep it. But for video purposes, I believe it can be a bit dark. But um, now we're getting quite a bit from the stock XFCE4 look. Kind of nice menus. Uh, the thunars start to look a bit better. Everything looks better. Some nicer icons. Some of them are missing, and I believe the icon theme wasn't really made for XFCE4. It was made for the Mint and probably Ubuntu. So you have to experiment a little bit with with uh, which icons actually works the best. But this is just to give you an idea how you customize your own XFCE4 to your preference and the liking and as you see here if you go to the settings again and the system I mean the terminal in my system I just press alt and Q and I launch the shell You can just go into the settings and uh, where was it now? I actually prefer the stock menu, it's um, easier to find stuff. Not preferred. By the way, here you have your auto start. It's impossible to see with this theme. You take that one. So, your auto start stuff. I want the all settings. Where is the all, all settings? Here it is. You see, some icons are missing, so that icon set didn't really do the trick. So then it's just trying another icon set and sooner or later you will find a good set that works as you want and look as you want. It's a matter of tried and error. And um, 
I ha don't have really that much to say about all this stuff because it's just a matter of reading and trying. That's how you learn. But for now we need to take another icon set so we actually can see everything. I don't like Advaita. Some people love it and I don't see why. What's more to say? If you have an NVIDIA card, you probably want the NV applet, I believe it was called. Then we look in my own system. Where is it? NV Dark. Sorry. The NV Dark is a tray icon for the NVIDIA. If you look, if you follow the mouse over there, which in my case open this one. Because if you install the NVIDIA drivers, you don't get this with the, this you get, of course, but you don't get the little handy uh, tray. So, if you have an NVIDIA card and you're using the NVIDIA drivers, I would strongly suggest you install the NV Dark. I will try to launch it, but I don't think it will do anything. No. Not, no big surprise, because this is a virtual box, so... I might as well remove it. But now, this looks like just like a pre-made distribution that is super duper awesome. But it's not. It's a system that you have made from scratch. It's a system that have the stuff you need and your computer needs. It doesn't have 1000 packages you don't need. And that's the whole point. I can't say that enough do not use distributions. You can look you, you can make it look just as you want. If you do these three videos again and again and again, I would guess that with a fast internet connection you can probably install Arch and make it look as you want in like 30 minutes. So <clears throat> there is really no point whatsoever to if you use these pre-made distributions, you will not learn what you need to learn, period. There's nothing to say about it. As soon as something don't work or you want to change anything, you have no idea and you go into the forum and whine and whine and whine. Learn from scratch, please. That's the only way to make Linux get a better reputation as well. Of course, if you are a completely new guy, install it, something don't work, well, Linux sucks. No, that's not the case. Absolutely not. But of course, you run into problem like I did now. The XTG dir update don't create my folders. And um, then it's just a matter of spending some time and uh, finding out why don't you do that. This update. Please try a sudo. It's still a bit strange. Um, well, I will fiddle with that later on. And as you know, this look is just a matter of changing it just as you want it. No, it's in the, the whisker menu. I just can't get along with the whisker menu. So window manager tweaks. But uh, now I'm forgetting this is not some kind of uh, review of uh, XFCE. But you see, if I had some Wi-Fi here, it's just a matter of changing it. Uh, 
and uh, yeah this should be enough to get you going and uh, give you enough knowledge to create your XFC for just as you want it and actually I'm gonna go back to the items boom remove the whiskey menus I prefer the stock one like that applications uh, settings 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 manager keyboard application shortcuts yeah and here's the thing settings keyboard application shortcuts here you can just add whatever you want I'm gonna check in my system what the file was called cat con, config open box rcxml grep xfa no print Mm -hmm. I had I haven't fixed that anyway what I'm mumbling about is that you can just press add and command and in virtual box I need to choose this wisely because the keyboard doesn't work as in a physical because like all Q that's my open box this one so I need to take something that the virtual box can listen to uh rl plus s a lower s in my case that would be screenshot oh sorry command xfce for screen shooter and then you just press the shortcut like that So what will happen when I push Control S? Ta da! Screenshot. And you can do this with all kind of stuff. <clears throat> Look, screenshot. Save. And like in my case, I am only using screenshots when it comes to my open box. I never use this, I have no icons, I have nothing, I have no menu, all I have is a panel and keyboard shortcuts, because it's do whatever I want. And speaking of that, <clears throat> I will show you a very, very, very nice application that you can't live without when you're getting used to it. And that is the Synapse, XFC terminal, sudo pacman dash s. Apps. I always do the dash capital S lower S when I'm insec insecure of the spelling so in this case it was correct but sometimes I remember wrong install that so what is synapse I will show you well synapse is this little thing if you just start to type what you want to launch take genie it finds it super fast and just launch it with the synapse you have no need whatsoever to even have the keyboard it's just absolutely perfect so go into the settings settings manager keyboard shortcut add synapse control R in my case I was thinking run so now it's just a matter of control R and then what I want to launch, I want to launch uh, Firefox like that. It's amazing. Probably one of the best handy utilities there is to Linux, control R and you can also choose but uh, I always just leave it and start to type. It's uh, nothing to say about it once you get used to it you can't be without it 
and uh, that's pretty much it. I have no sound in my virtual box at the moment. And that is also a matter of taste and what stuff you have. But uh, basically you would install also Come on, what was the name of it? I don't use it for also. Uh, Pulse Audio. Yep. Let's install that. But you want a volume icon, so I don't know, you can use Power Control. Yes. And I launched that. some things are really easier in a physical machine either way you will get a icon here where you can choose your volume so <clears throat> now you have pretty much everything you are used to in a pre-made distribution but you have made it yourself and doesn't that feel very good you know what you have and you know why you have it And the most important part, which I can't say too many times, now we are in 570 packages. And I promise most of the more comprehensive distributions that support anything on the planet will have easily 1000 packages more. For what good do you want that? So, I will post a little list at the, in the end of the description here below because you want some just go crazy with the conky genie I can't really think of anything else at the moment because blender and gimp and all that stuff will just take some too much too much time to download and I had no plans to use it in the virtual box <clears throat> but Genie is a very lovely editor, by the way, because uh, it uses tabs, and when you open it, it starts where you last ended. It's easier to launch to open a file with it. You do sudo Genie, etc. No, no. So this is how it will look in real life. <clears throat> it's color coded and uh, well give it a go if you are, are working with uh, scripts or stuff like that. Also if you have some smaller like notepad in Windows you can just install mousepad which we already had. I forgot. It's a part of XFCE for goodies. This is just like no in Windows. And uh, I apologize for the uh, like uh, insecure, fumbly appearance. But uh, one, I'm tired. Two, I'm not really used to this yet. And as I said, I could record this absolutely flawless. But I don't do that because I want you to see that I have used Arch since 2009, I believe. But some stuff is so, so it can be years between the times I do it. So, of course, I forget. But either way, that's that. And next time I was thinking about open box and many things you can share between XFCE4 and open box like icon sets and uh, all kind of stuff. So once you have open box, you really just need tin 2 and nitrogen to make it look like this. Like um, the best file manager in my opinion for the open box is Thunar and you have Thunar. This is Thunar. So get open box up and running when you have XFCE4 is a breeze. So that's it for now. 
please experiment a little bit and um, if you have any questions just let me know and I answer ASAP and I will do my best to help you and I wish you very luck and I hope you have followed all these three episodes and managed to get it working as you want and uh, in that case take a cup of coffee tap yourself on the shoulder and I'll see you later bye